You may have realized that being healthy feels different than it did in the past now that you're over 50. If you want to maximize your health potential but don't have time to read through overwhelming pages of Google links, this is the show for you. Welcome to Healthy Tips After 50. We love doing the research, finding solutions, talking to health experts, and learning what works and what doesn't. Now, your host. She spent the last 25 years dedicated to feeling her best and is here to share her best findings with you, Susan Rosen. Hello, everyone. This is your host, Susan Rosen, and my guest today is Mark Nelson, and he is going to be talking to us about body types, and this is something that is just totally new to me, so I'm just going to be as as much of an interested, um, just do a blank on, on person we'll leave it there <laughs> as everyone else will <laughs> as you can see kind of casual here okay <laughs> so mark is the lead scientific researcher at fellow one research and he has pioneered body type science the four body types since 2003 including creating the scientific body type quiz and scientific weight loss programs, basic and advanced, as well as the only online worldwide science-based health community website. And just to get it out of the way, I will be including all lots of links in the show notes so people can go to the website. And um, actually, one of the links will take you to uh, one sample person's um, information on the website as well so it's not like you have to go looking for things so should be some some good links there okay so i'm gonna lower that down okay so welcome mark didn't mean to ignore you there <laughs> no worries thank you for for having me um yes so um i i, I can I, I can start with opening up about body type science in general, yeah. if you'd like. Okay. Yeah, um, I, think that, I think that see how your audience has a tendency, it sounds like, to uh, to be the 50 plus crowd. Uh, I will use an example from our, our scientific body type quiz. Uh, uh, it's quiz 1185. He's 58 years old. He's a body type two. Um, and just so that folks understand body types in general. So until... 2003, there were no scientific body types. The only body types that really existed were the unscientific, mm -hmm. debunked three body types, which are the endomorph, ectomorph, and mesomorph. And again, there's no science behind which, those. I was going to say, which none of us, none of the rest of us have ever heard of. So probably. Right, right. So, <laughs> And, but they have been around since the since the 1940s when a man named William Sheldon developed them. But again, they have been fully debunked. Um, and the reason that they were debunked is because they aren't based on any science. They're, they are strictly arbitrary subjective shapes that offer nothing other than arbitrary subjective shapes. Subjective shapes, shapes yeah. <laughs> Whereas our body type science, which again started in 2003, is based on genetics. So oh. we, I, I was born in a body that lacked muscle and muscle mass. Uh, and my general backstory is when I was around eight, I was a star soccer player and I was out on the soccer field uh, during a shirts off practice one day. And I began to notice that my body was very di different than most oh. of my peers. Okay. Uh, and as I grew and I hit age 10, I began to notice even more. And when I hit puberty, that my body had fat all over it where there should be muscle and muscle mass. And I was not uh -huh. an overweight or fat child. I was well within my safe BMI weight range. When uh -huh. I would go and get my, my physical, the doctor would tell me I was totally normal because I was within my safe BMI. Yet uh -huh. I had skinny fat all over my body. And so this led me on my journey to figure out why, why do I have skinny fat? Mm -hmm. Skinny fat is cellulite, thin fat, loose skin, saggy skin, crepey skin, or normal weight obesity. Why do I have skinny fat all over my body, even when I'm well within my safe 
BMI weight range. Mm -hmm. When, according to mainstream science and medical doctors, when I am within my safe BMI weight range, I am a body type one. I am the standard scientific human body uh, anatomy book body type one that you find in any standard scientific uh -huh. uh, anatomy book. So that's why I started my journey was to figure that out. Mm -hmm. And so what I came up with was uh, I looked at the hormone body types and that didn't make any sense because just as we have body types up on our site where the, uh, the person is a body type two, three, or four, but they've never been diagnosed with any hormone imbalance. They aren't dealing with a hormone imbalance. And, and so hormones just didn't do it. They, they just didn't add up because if hormones were the reason for your body type shape, then it would then it would be true for all people. You will, you would be able to find a correlation right. and see that if this hormone was out of balance, you would have been diagnosed with it by your doctor, and therefore you would be this body shape. But none of that's true. It's mm -hmm. just this sort of arbitrary hodgepodge of different body types, and, and they say, well, you're a thyroid, or you're this hormone or that hormone. But again, we have body type two, threes, and fours up on our site who have never been diagnosed. They are not dealing with a hormone uh, imbalance, and yet they are dealing with skinny fat and a body type two. So hormones just didn't add up either. So we broke down the body in terms of the vertebrae in the back. And we know that it's a scientific fact that any part of the human body can be underdeveloped to whatever degree. That includes muscle and muscle mass. Just as it is a scientific genetic fact that every vertebra houses a specific set of muscles. So what happens if you have vertebra that have underdeveloped muscle or muscle mass? You get posture issues mm -hmm. and you get metabolism issues because one pound of muscle mass burns six calories daily. But one pound of skinny fat or fat only burns two to three calories daily. Mm. So we look at this from a genetic point of view, and we broke it down relative to the 26 vertebrae, meaning the seven cervical, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, one sacrum, and one coccyx. There are 26, and we broke it down in terms of a body type one is just the body type one. It's the standard image that you are being judged by every time you go and see your doctor. That is a body type one. It has zero underdeveloped vertebrae and muscle and muscle mass. A body type two has one to eight underdeveloped vertebrae, including muscle and muscle mass. Body type three is nine to 17, and a body type four is 18 through 26. So that's how we came to our four body types uh, and a general overview of things i'll sort of pause here and see if i'm making any sense um yeah yeah no no it does it does to me it's um it's obviously a, an extremely different way of looking and it and is. and uh, um analyzing i want to call it to, you know the, the body and kind of where you are in in the norm right and so, and I, I use my body as the example of this because I was born in a, in a biotype four. Again, I, I was born okay. with very little muscle and muscle mass all over my, my uh -huh. body. And it was easy to correlate it because I could look at my own body and be like, yeah, I'm missing muscle mass everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, so, right. But if we look at, say, biotype quiz two, uh, 1185 up on our site, uh -huh. uh, he is... 58 years old mm -hmm. and he is um, according to our quiz he is lacking muscle and muscle mass relative to his lumbar two three four five and sacrum and why we came to that is one we have his images up on his profile page but mm -hmm. we also look at things like where does he have a tendency to put on fat weight on his body Mm -hmm. where does he have skinny fat on his body mm -hmm. because those two things have a strong tendency to correlate where you have skinny fat on your body you are likely to put excess fat weight on more easily okay. um, so so that's uh, a, a general overview of uh, 1185 and why we came to him being a body type two um, and 
yeah. you can look at many of the the different images up on our site. We've got one very telling image that has a by type one. These are real people who took mm -hmm. the real quiz, and and you can see that we have a by type one, a by type two, a by type three, and a by type four all mm -hmm. placed side by side, and you can see their back, and you can see where they are lacking muscle and muscle mass relative to the vertebrae that we identified in their quiz. So. Mm -hmm. We are obviously science-based, therefore we are evidence and facts-based, logic and reason, uh, and that's how we came to things. Uh, so again, I'll sort of pause here and see what questions you might have. Um, well, I guess it prob probably what next in, in what you're talking about is, okay, so how does that affect my health? How does that affect my life? How does that affect? Great you know, question. Yes. So muscle is the armor of the human body. Okay. There are many advantages to having muscle on your body. One of them is uh, strength, uh, mm -hmm. athleticism, agility, uh, speed. Muscle is what generates all these things, is what allows for all these things. So if you're a bi type one, you have more of a tendency to uh, uh, be better at sports, uh, okay. which is why pro athletes especially pretty much all pro pro athletes like 90 percent plus are a are a body type one you could look at maybe uh nfl linemen who are a body type two uh possibly a body type three but most likely just body type twos maybe mm -hmm. a judo wrestler who's a body type two or a body type three but aside from those most mm -hmm. pro athletes are a body type one and it's because mm -hmm. they have a they have all of the developed muscle on their body because that's how important muscle and muscle mass is so it's not just sports and mm -hmm. agility and all the things that come with uh, right. in, in an athletic body type muscle is also directly linked to your metabolism so mm -hmm. science recognizes that one pound of muscle mass burns six calories but one pound of skinny fat or fat only burns two to three calories mm -hmm. so if you are relying on your standard mifflin saint gior or harris benedict bmr scores mm -hmm. standard calculated neither of those are taking into account skinny fat which means that you are likely if you're following those standard bmrs you're likely still eating too many calories daily if you have skinny fat on your body especially the more skinny fat that you have on your body so again that's one more reason why it, you may think that you're eating the right uh, amount of calories daily relative to your bmr but if you have skinny fat in your body you likely are still eating too many calories so it will directly affect your diet your exercise and your lifestyle because of your metabolism and because of your ability to play sports or do exercising the third thing is, is if you're lacking muscle and muscle mass, like I was, you are an easy target for bullies because I was so weak, because I was lacking muscle and muscle mass, I was a weakling and I was a super easy target for bullies. I was bullied at home, on the way to school, at school, on the way back from school, at home again, because I was lacking so much muscle and muscle mass, which carried on into my adult life and has pretty much always been an issue because I was lacking so much muscle and muscle mass. So a lack of muscle and muscle mass equates to all of those things. Hmm. And in place of that, of that muscle and muscle mass is skinny fat. And most people who have skinny fat on their body know it well, cellulite especially. Okay. And it's this, this thing that you want to get rid of, but it's hard to get rid of. You can't just go and run it away, right? You, you can't just go do cardio exercise and get rid of it you can't just go and do weightlifting or some resistance exercise and get rid of it it's a very difficult thing if not impossible in some ways to get rid of mm -hmm. which is why most people struggle with it and it's one of the biggest things that you see nowadays in terms of a, if you do a, a search online how do i get rid of my cellulite there is no way right now there are some fda approved means that will help reduce it okay. but there's no way to get rid of cellulite um, and not all human bodies have cellulite so we have a section up on our site that is 
celebrity body types. And there That's are plenty awesome. of celebrity body type ones, and they don't have any cellulite on their body. And some of them are now in their 50s, like Jada Pinkett Smith or yeah. e Elizabeth Hurley, right? Or uh, uh, Mark Wahlberg. I mean, there are plenty of folks in their 50s now who are celebrity body type ones, and they have no cellulite on their body whatsoever. And so what I'm getting at is we have a lot of people who say, well, no, cellulite is just this natural thing or skinny fat or fat. It's just this natural thing that as you age, you just put it on. And it's like, no, that's not true. It's true for some body types, but it's not true for other body types. And there's a reason. And that reason is genetics. So I'll sort of pause here and see if I'm making any sense. Um, yeah. So maybe you're going to talk about this. And, and if it's coming up, you can let me know. Where does do things like exercise and diet? And I'm not saying necessarily going on a diet, but just your diet, right? How do those things fit in or, you know, with, with all of this? Because it can't just be, it's like, yes, there are, you know, there are those people growing up that you always know about or whatever, you know, and they can eat whatever they want and they never gain any weight, right? Or other people who are always losing weight. They can't eat enough to keep enough weight on them. Um, but for the majority of people, <laughs> there's kind of a correlation, right? Between what they eat, how much they eat and how much um, fat or whatever right. gets on their diet. So where, where does all of that kind of lead us? So diet in terms of calories. So let's just look at the old weight loss model versus the new weight loss model. So the old weight loss model is calorie in, calorie out. A calorie Absolutely. is a calorie yeah, yeah. is a calorie, yeah. and that's it. And you weight can eat watchers. Right, right. So, but new weight loss has completely debunked that and says mm -hmm. that a calorie most certainly is not a calorie. You mm -hmm. cannot eat a McDonald's French fry and expect it to be the same as a piece of broccoli. A McDonald's French fry is tastier, but it has really no <laughs> nutritional value. And well said, that is also relative, right? Yeah. So, but if you're a young person, especially, yeah. start to talk a, a young person into eating a piece of broccoli over eating a McDonald's French fry. Unless you can get them to see the science behind it and help them understand that the quality of your food matters that so what we're talking about is glycemic index and that is basically how the food that you eat affects your blood sugar mm -hmm. and how rapidly it spikes your blood sugar or doesn't mm -hmm. spike your blood sugar mm -hmm. so if you're on a low carb diet then you are looking for you know, uh, somewhere around 56 grams of carbs per day or less somewhere in that mm -hmm. general area uh, and, and if you are, and if you are looking to eat a low carb meal, you really want something that is in, that is a glycemic index of somewhere around 56 or 57 or less. And that's basically just means that it has a lot less sugar in general, because what a carb really is when broken down is sugar. And there's mm -hmm. different parts of a carb. There's the sugars, and then there's the fiber, and then there can be starch. But what we're looking at in terms of carbs in general is sugar and fiber what we want is carbs that are high in fiber and lower in sugar right mm -hmm. so fruits and vegetables are the are the best because they have tendencies to be high in fiber and lower in sugar and that can be relative to the specific type of fruit but even then fruit in general even fruits that have a tendency to quote unquote be, quote unquote, be higher in sugar I, I would say are still better than a, a piece of cube right yeah so but most people don't realize that when you go out and you eat fast food, processed junk, fast food, that that is typically a high glycemic index. Even though you, you might say, well, I just ate a McDonald's hamburger. I didn't, I didn't have a, uh, a chocolate shake. I just had a hamburger. Well, what you don't realize is that the bun that you're eating is all white bread. So it's basically high in sugar. It's got a high glycemic okay. index. And then all the sauces are all high in sugar the ketchup and the mayonnaise and the, and the hamburger itself. And a lot the of times they put stuff in it. Right. Mm -hmm. And especially how they mm -hmm. cook. It. So does it mm -hmm. have, uh, is it poor quality fats that it was cooked with? 
yada, yada. So fast food has a tendency to be low quality ingredients that's high in sugar, uh, carbs, which are sugar, and then poor quality fats. And so if you're, if you're just going by the standard calorie in, calorie out model, then you think, well, so long as I go and I have only a small junior burger at Wendy's instead of a large burger, right, then I'm doing myself a favor because I'm only eating so many calories, and therefore I'm doing well with my diet. You're wrong because the quality of the food that you eat matters. So in terms of diet, there are most certainly some people who can eat whatever they want. I knew them. I still know them. Uh, and they are, they are maddening, but they most likely are a body type one and they have full muscle mass development on their body, which means that they have a very healthy metabolism because another advantage of muscle is that it burns calories, right? right? Whereas if you have skinny fat on your body, even if you're within your safe BMI, if you're someone like me who has skinny fat on their body, which Mm -hmm. when I'm in my safe BMI, it's called normal weight obesity, which carries the same general risks as obesity. Even though I'm within my safe BMI weight range, Uh I have normal weight obesity, meaning I have too much fat on my body still, even though I'm well within my safe BMI weight range. And science and medical doctors really have no explanation for this. All that they care about is the BMI. So when you ask them about it, well, I'm within my safe BMI doc, why am I dealing with skinny fat all over my body? And they, uh-huh. it's hard for me to get an answer. I've never really gotten an answer because they right. don't really know. They dance around it. They dance around it. And yeah. so, and that's a huge problem because again, even if I'm within my safe BMI, mm-hmm. if I am eating a diet that mm-hmm. is, uh, that is not healthy, uh, then it's going to affect that skinny fat. Where I have skinny fat, I'm going to have higher tendencies to put on fat weight because that skinny fat is burning much fewer calories than the muscle that should be there. So w- your diet most certainly matters and the quality of your food matters. We don't necessarily push a, a certain diet uh, in terms of our scientific weight loss diary. We have a whole list of diets up on our site, but we do believe in the science and the science says that the best diet right now is the blue zone Mediterranean diet. Uh, yeah. And the, the short of the long of that is, is we have sort of combined the, the blue zones, which are five areas on the planet where people live to be in their hundreds and they live normal, Mm -hmm. healthy lives. Mm -hmm. They aren't popping a bunch of allopathic pills and Mm -hmm. struggling Mm -hmm. in their 70s and 80s just to get to to their 80s. They are actually living true, normal, healthy lives into their hundreds. And it's because of their diet, exercise, Mm -hmm. and lifestyle. So those are the the blue zones. And then, of Mm -hmm. course, the Mediterranean diet has a lot of science behind it. And it's just a Really good diet in general. It's a flexible diet. It yeah. can be low carb. It can be low fat. You can eat meat. You cannot yeah. eat meat. It's vegetarian based. You can be uh, probably vegan is the one thing that w- that would be tough on the Mediterranean diet. Yes, you're right. But, but it's definitely flexible. So again, we don't push a specific diet, but we do have a list up on our site along with a list of exercises. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we, we encourage that one, you understand your, your specific body type. Mm-hmm. And then two, mm-hmm. you learn what the best diet, exercise, and lifestyle is for your specific body type. And that's why we created the scientific body type quiz so that you can track all that, yada, yada. So I'll sort of pause here and see what questions mm-hmm. you might have. Um, well, I do have one comment for sure, which is that, yes, I'm totally on board with the Mediterranean diet. I mean, I've done a number of podcasts over the last couple of years especially before I started doing interview, you know, interviews as often as I do now, um, where I was doing my own, you know, just me talking. And, and I did at least three or four just on the Mediterranean diet Great because diet. It's, it's like you can't turn around without running into a new, a, a new survey, a new paper, a new whatever, right. showing the Mediterranean diet being the best period indeed yes and and it's so it's such an easy diet personally i find to eat i mean it's all the things that i eat normally so it was it was no big deal 
And that's because it is flexible indeed. Yeah, yeah. yeah and it it's and it's good stuff. I mean, it just it's tasty and now yeah. you and you and I say that, and I yeah. definitely <laughs> agree with me, but when I was growing up, especially when I was a kid, because McDonald's and you know, all the fast food restaurants were so popular and still are. And, mm. you know, uh, Sam's Club, f- frozen f- foods like pizzas and such. It's like when you're a kid, you just don't really give it a, a, a whole lot of thought. Uh, mm. I-, I was so active that even though I had skinny fat all over my body, I and mean, I was a really active kid. Mm-hmm. I played a lot That's of how my husband and, was, yeah. Right. And so I was still thin, but I was, I was skinny fat. And so I, uh, I, and I started to really watch my diet more once I hit around age 10 or so, because I didn't want to be obese, yeah. but it was tough. It, 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 it was tough to, to have access to any other foods other than the fast junk and processed foods, especially in the mid eighties, because calorie in calorie out was the, the, the weight loss model. And that was just how, how it was. I don't think that it's really changed that much nowadays in terms of if you're a young person, if you're in college uh, or such, right, you probably have limited funds and fast food is just easy. Um, so as much as I think that you're right, the Mediterranean diet for me is easy. I love the food that I, that I eat. Um, it's, it's harder for especially younger people because they, they, they just don't know yet. But that's why this show and other shows like it are great because we're trying to educate them that, you know, it's not as hard as you think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, exactly. Exactly. Well, you know, I, th- I think that there are a lot more people out there doing, doing podcasts, doing um, just their whole lifestyle. I mean, you know, the whole, the whole, um, oh, shit, I can't think of what it's called. I can see it and I can't think of it what happens when you get older it's like the short-term memory is just like gone um you know i was thinking about the guy the guy who started all of that all of the low carb um can't think of his name anyways it'll come to me but you know there there are all of these people and they have all these groupies around them (laughs) the best way i can describe it but a lot of them have some really good diets they have some really good things um that can introduce people right to start eating more healthfully it's why we get the carbs down right it's why we have a a solid list of different diets up on the site yeah because we we really do believe that there are plenty of good diets out there whether it's the atkins diet you know whatever the whatever the diet is there are plenty of healthy diets so we're not trying to just say oh this is the only diet Mm -hmm. right but the point is, is that figuring out a healthy diet for your right. specific body is it's work. It's not just, you know, it, it took me time to, to figure out what does work best and what doesn't mm-hmm. work best, especially for my gut bacteria. I'm sure mm-hmm. that you know the importance mm-hmm. of gut bacteria mm-hmm. and keeping them healthy. Right. So, yes. you know, it's basically what am I eating that is, that is working in in harmony with my gut bacteria and keeping the rest of me healthy. Because when my gut bacteria aren't healthy, then my immune system's not healthy and the rest right. of the body's not healthy. So it's all symbiotic. But figuring out a solid diet really starts with understanding that you need qual- high quality food. So whole food, whether organic. it's organic, and, and if you can afford it, <laughs> organic, most certainly. Well, yeah. organic is getting it actually, you know, it is aside, it's, it's much more at, well. And part of that is probably also where I live. And okay. same, and same here. We have a lot of choices here. So it, right. it keeps prices down. That's right. That's right. And te- technically they're usually not, unless you can get them on sale, they're not as low as the others, but there are also things that you don't need to buy organic, right. like avocados. Right. You know, they've done a lot of tests, a lot of, you know, experiments and stuff with the avocados and there's no difference. Right. And it's, and it's the same with dates. And so they, so if you, if you do the research up online, they have the, the dirty dozen. Yes. Yes. Right. Environmental, environmental working group. 
Right. And then yes. there's the clean 15. So yes, you are yes. right. So, but, I, I do them. I do. I do podcasts about them too. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but that's really it is, is mm-hmm. it, it's really figuring out yes. what you can afford, what works best yes. for your body. But that yes. really starts with understanding what your body type is, because if you are dealing with muscle and muscle mass all over your, your body, then you are one of the lucky few who can likely eat whatever you want. Right. And especially when you are, are, are younger and just not worry about it. But for the rest of us who are by type two, three, or four, we have to pay more attention to things. And then if you have Mm -hmm. food allergies and such, then you gotta, you know, so it gets complicated, but that's really what it's all about. So, but we, so we have so many people who come and take our, our quiz who mm-hmm. are convinced that they are a bi type one. They're just overweight because that's what they've been told. Right. And then, so we had, we had one participant who um, it was uh, 1170. She was in her early twenties. She mm-hmm. lost the weight. She was right at the edge of her safe BMI. Uh, and then she lost 19 pounds. She got down then the mid-range of her safe BMI. And she was convinced. Her doctor told her, everyone told her, if you lose the weight, you'll look just like a body type one. When she lost all that weight and, and got down within her safe BMI, she doesn't. She doesn't look like a body type one. She has skinny fat all over her body still where she should have muscle and, and muscle mass. And she's 23. So it's, it, it's not like she's you or I where we've crossed mm-hmm. the 40-year threshold. And, and we know that gradually after that point, we lose a little bit of muscle mass every year. The, when you're younger, there's no scientific evidence that, that the human body breaks down or uses muscle or mm-hmm. muscle mass to function mm-hmm. unless you are unsafely dieting and you're starving your body. Right. And it's the only option that it has left is to consume to the muscle. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But if you're starving your body, you likely have skinny fat on it and you so your body will eat up that skinny fat first. So mm-hmm. what I'm getting at is, is if you're younger, there is no scientific evidence that you that your body burns muscle or muscle mass if you're safely dieting. So you are already a body type one if you are within your safe BMI weight range. So technically, there should be no reason for you to have to lift weights or do really any exercise once you're within your safe BMI weight range because you have all that muscle and, and muscle mass. Now, uh, of course, we are huge fans of exercise, so I'm not telling young people not. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. I'm simply saying that when you go and see your doctor, they are judging your body by the standard scientific human body uh, anatomy book by type one, by the BMI, by the BMR, and when you are within your safe. BMI weight range, you are a body type one with all muscle and muscle mass fully developed according to mainstream science and medical doctors. Mm-hmm. So there should be no reason if you're under 40 to have to lift weights right, and add muscle and muscle mass because it's already there on your body. So with this, this um, participant, uh, 1170, when she lost all of the weight, her first response when she looked at her body when she was at her mid-range BMI and she did not look like a body type one was I must have lost muscle and muscle mass when I was losing weight oh no but again there's no scientific evidence that that's true Uh right that's just her first assumption because that muscle and muscle mass isn't there but the fact of the matter is is that it's genetics she was genetically lacking that muscle and muscle mass from day one. And we have that on her quiz results. And she just didn't realize that. And she didn't realize how much it affected her diet and exercise, how much it affected her metabolism, how much it affected her life in general. Okay. And she came to that understanding because she took our scientific biotype quiz. She did the work. She lost the weight using our scientific weight loss diary and she realized i'm just a body type three i'm simply lacking that muscle and muscle mass where i should have that uh-huh. muscle, muscle mass and there is skinny fat because of my genetics and that's that uh-huh. and now that she knows that now she has a, a better sense of the diet and exercise that works well for her so she can at least 
maintain and manage her body type three well as she ages. And that's our goal here. We are trying to educate people so they, 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 they understand their specific body type so they can figure out the best diet and exercise and, and lifestyle for their body type. And they can stop with all the nonsense up on social media, all the lies and disinformation that shows these photoshopped and filtered body uh, images that are just not real. And then you have all these young people who see these unreal, completely false body images that they now are trying to hold their own uh, self to. And that's why they are led to these unsafe and unhealthy diets of starvation, which will eat muscle and muscle mass, yada, yada, and lead to other health issues. Uh, so, yeah. So it, is that making sense? Yeah, no, no, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. So, um, so I think, I think one of the bottom line things that you're trying to get across here is that no matter what your body type is, you can be healthy Yes. and well, and, um, you know, no matter what your age. Right. That is correct. Yeah. And And yeah. And that the way you look after you've lost the weight or whatever it happens to be may not be the movie star body. Yes, correct. Right? Right. Um, which I think that the second part, um, I think it's gotten better as far as people getting, you know, oh, I have to look like this or look like that. Um, just overall, at least our society. I think that we're definitely moving in a, yeah. it, it, we, we are starting to move in a right direction relative to yeah. that especially as it as folks up on social media begin to wake up to how damaging it is for them to put out these false photoshopped filtered images right when that's not how they really live and it's just not honest the stuff that's up there is just so disgusting it is and the only way that we really change it is we educate people and we bring forward the science like like biotype science, and we help people understand Mm -hmm. you you have to accept your body and your genetics for what it is. Uh We don't get upset because four plus four is equal to eight. We accept it because that's just a fact. It just is what it is. The same is true with your body and your genetics. They are what they are. Uh If you can understand why they are what they are, why you have skinny fat, where you have muscle and muscle mass that will then help you figure out a, a, a healthy diet, exercise and lifestyle, but stop trying to hold yourself to standards that you will never. Right. Yeah. Oh no, exactly. Exactly. So out of curiosity, what just, what just occurred to me uh, um, to ask is, are there, because you're talking about this all being based on genetics and we all know that genetics developed differently in different parts of the world, having to do with weather, having to do with terrain, having to do with, you know, survival, many, many different things, right? Right. So have you been able, or are you not even bothering with trying to, to connect some of those dots for people? Oh, most certainly. We would definitely like to connect those dots. So I was on a podcast recently where uh, that was a point that the host brought up and he said, well, I have a tendency to store fat on my love handles and on my stomach. And that's just evolutionary because, you know, the body has to store fat uh, for, for, for lean times. And Mm -hmm. my response was, well, if that were true, then everyone would likely store fat in those same general areas or, or, Right. But and so are you saying then that the bi- that a bi type one person has no fat stores when they most certainly do have fat stores? They, they just are in places that, that we can't see. Right. And likely it's around the organs and other places where the body most certainly stores fat for lean times so that it has that those extra calories when food is, is short. So, yes, d- d- depending on the the evolution of the ge- gen- genetics, excuse me, uh-huh. it definitely matters. That being said, 
right now, science can find no evolutionary purpose for skinny fat. Oh, interesting. Okay. Right. So, so if you're out on the, if you were a hunter gatherer and you're out with your hunting crew, mm -hmm. um, 10,000 years ago uh -huh. and you're, and you are, and, and you're out in the open and there's no trees that you can climb and you run across a pack of lions. Who do you think is going to be the first person that the lion catches? It's likely going to be the person who has the least amount of muscle on their body because they can run the slowest. So if you, the more skinny fat that you have on your body, the, the more skinny fat and fat that you have on your body, likely the slower it is that you move uh -huh. and you, you are then the first target of any, uh, and your genetics go away. And your genetics go away. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. Huh. Which is, which is why you stated earlier that, uh, so in terms of obesity, we don't have strong obesity data past probably 1900 or so, because we just don't have a whole lot of strong scientific data prior to that in general. So we don't really know down through history how much of a problem obesity really was. We have stories of ancient Rome where you know there were there were definitely obesity issues, but we don't really have a strong sense of when did obesity really start? When did it really start to get bad? We know from our modern data that it really started getting bad in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. And it's just gotten worse since, right? Mm -hmm. But was it something that was always an an issue and we just saw it get worse because there was more access to there was more easy access to food especially mm -hmm. poor quality food like fast mm -hmm. junk and processed food and that's why we have seen the obesity epidemic grow as it has or was it always a problem and it was simply that prior to the 1960s, we just didn't have the access to the food and such that we do now. And we just didn't see the rates of obesity as bad because there wasn't the access to food. We just don't know right now. But that, those are definitely dots that we are looking to connect because it's important that we understand that. Right? But we do know that evolutionary wise, that there is no real science that backs up any purpose for skinny fat in terms of you know the evolution of it so why do we have skinny fat on our body if there was no evolutionary purpose for it and yeah. so yeah interesting yeah and it's also i mean just thinking about my own family um four kids two of us had weight problems and the other two didn't so would you say that uh, the other two who didn't uh, uh so uh, sorry let me start over and in terms of the parents of those four kids, uh -huh. was one more predisposed to being obese and the other was not? No. No. Mm -hmm. no. So somewhere in I that. My, I'm trying to think of my mother. My mother may have been a little on the chubby side when she was very young, you know, like very young, like before, before teenage years. But um, my, my father wasn't. No. no. So that's super interesting because, again, how do the actual genes play in? It sounds yeah. like maybe two of them got a recessive gene, which caused them to have more skinny yeah. fat where they should have muscle and muscle mass. Yeah. But that's, you know, uh, the the complexity of genes is yeah. you yeah. can have somebody who is, a, huh? you can have two um two parents who are dwarves and they can have a normal yes. full child, right? That's right. So, yeah. but that's it is we need to better understand our, mm -hmm. our, our genes. And for some of us, we get lucky and we're a body type yeah. one. And for others like me, we suffer the consequences of poor genetics. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to, I'll have to look up there and, and do the body type quiz out of curiosity. Well, just to see, because, uh, um, yeah, because I mean, I was a fat little kid. I was on Weight Watchers when Weight Watchers first started. Were you a a uh, a heavy eater? Yeah, yeah, and I didn't I didn't do much, you okay. know, running around and ex and exercise or playing sports. You know, the girl girls weren't doing that then much. Right. Um, How about um, skinny fat? Do you have skinny fat on your body, um, cellulite or such? Um. 
at this point, I don't know if they would be skinny fat. I mean, I have from, I have, you know, fat, some fat kind of stuff rolls, but most of it, I, I, when I worked out, I didn't. Now I don't, I haven't worked out since the pan, before the pandemic started. So it's like, you know, everything's kind of gone to hell. <laughs> so, um, prior to, did you have tendencies to have skinny fat on your body, cellulite and such? Not particularly, not particularly. No, no so I mean, now I've, now I've got the, this kind of stuff. Right, right. You know, so, but I didn't, that, that just started when I got, especially when getting older and then, um, you know, not doing anything. And How old are you now? 67. So that is, that is definitely something that, as we know, as soon as you cross the 40 year threshold, you definitely lose a little bit of muscle each year. So it definitely becomes harder to judge a body type as you get older, but not oh, okay. impossible. And you can yeah. see it more clearly relative to the, the full back shots that we require yeah. with scientific quiz so that right. you can really see, you know, is it obvious that you're missing muscle and muscle mass relative to a specific vertebra or vertebrae? That's how we okay. can tell. So it's not always just about skinny fat or fat. albeit yeah. those are also telling variables in terms of the whole. Yeah. Yeah. When I stand up straight, you know, there isn't anything when I see myself in the back, you know, there's, there isn't any fat or any, anything like this on my back. You absolutely focus on your, your uh, posture and you stand up straight. Yeah. 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 So, and that's really it. So it, it, it's why we recommend things like yoga or, you know, mm. maybe Pilates because it helps you get to know your spine. And what oh, we okay. say is that it's really about gravity. Gravity yes. is the real weight that is pushing down on your body always. Oh, that's and right. That's if your body is always working uh, against, and we know this because astronauts mm -hmm. go to space and when they come back, they are missing a lot of muscle mass. And yeah. Body. Yeah. Right? So if we can figure out how to use gravity in harmony with our mm -hmm. e e exercising, then we, yeah. the only downside of resistance exercises like weightlifting is mm. once you stop doing those, then all the hard work that you did from all of the repetition exercises. That's it gradually goes away and yep. that can be true at any age if you yeah. when i was in my uh, teens i and 20s i oh, yeah. lifted weights and then by the time i was in my late 20s i was shifting to other types of um, of cardio and such and i uh -huh. saw that any of the muscle mass gains that i'd done from the repetition exercises had somewhat gone yeah away. that's the downside of resistance exercises and everyone knows that that's true but if you can figure out how to do exercise in relation to gravity right then right your body's always working against that gravity so it has more of a tendency to maintain that muscle and muscle mass over time if okay. you're using it against gravity so okay. we usually say start with yoga get to yeah. to know your spine and then if you can translate that to an upright and you know, holding your posture and learning yeah. how to walk right, et cetera, yeah. you will likely see a lesser muscle mass atrophy over time, especially after you get over the age of 40. So anyways, is that making sense? No, no, it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I've always had a tendency to you know, do that yeah. even before I hit my 40s, <laughs> but it's okay. been worse after that. <laughs> and with the... Well, we sit and, too much and, now as well, right. which does it, not help. It does not help. It doesn't. And I, mm -hmm. I, I will do standing work at times, um, yeah. you know, but yeah, we definitely sit too much. And as you get over 40, it just, it just hits you harder, <laughs> which is no fun. <laughs> I can't remember back that far. <laughs> <laughs> well, but hopefully. Anyways, well, yeah. Why don't we, why don't we kind of sum up here otherwise we'll be here for another hour <laughs> um, i would say that folks can go to fellowone.com uh -huh. uh, you can take the scientific body type quiz please uh -huh. do check out quiz 1185 again he is a uh, 58 year old uh, white male who is currently using our uh, 
scientific weight loss diary. Uh, mm-hmm. You can go and see all of his sci- all excuse me, all of his scientific weight loss, diet, exercise, and lifestyle data in common, if you'd like, and learn more. Okay. Um, but um, and aside from our scientific body type quiz and our scientific mm-hmm. weight loss diary, which you can get up on the site, um, please note that the scientific weight loss diary, we are not in competition with My Fitness Pal or Calorie King or Apple Health app. Ours is totally different. You can use all of those wonderful apps to track all your data. And then ours is really about holding yourself accountable. It's seeing all that data up in one place. You can have it on your phone. You can open up your profile. You can invite your friends, your family, your dietitian, Mm. your fitness pro, whoever. They can come and join for free and join in the conversation. Mm. Uh And you can see everything slowly unfolding as you track your scientific diet exercise Mm. and, and lifestyle data, your your um, images over time and such. And you can hold yourself accountable as you lose weight while mm-hmm. you're understanding this is my body type. So I need to have real expectations about what my end right. results are. And if I don't look like a body type one, that's okay. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. that's the, that's the advantage of our, uh, of those two things. Uh, and then there's also a book, um, it's called Overprivileged White Guy, and it's my story. And ah. the reason that I named it that was because I was born in a biotech four, and I was bullied every day of my life. Right. I could yeah. not imagine uh, living, especially in this country, uh, not being a white male, how much harder my life would have been. And I realized that 40% of our country doesn't recognize that racism is a problem. But as a white male, I, I experienced it firsthand uh, relative to other friends and such. And I know that it's real. And I, mm-hmm. so I just, I think that the only way that we fix things, including our diet, exercise and lifestyle uh, is talking about it. And so mm-hmm. the, the book is written in novel format. It's not some mm-hmm. boring scientific jargon, uh-huh. even though it is based off the science, but uh-huh. it's written in novel format so that hopefully mm-hmm. it keeps folks in, in, in entertained excuse me okay. um yeah that's really it and we're also up on social media um you can go up and do um uh, the ask gnosis which is really like siri or uh, alexa you can ask us questions and we'll oh. as busy as we are we will add, we will answer as soon as possible you can also mm-hmm. go to the to the website and buy ask gnosis credits and ask there uh but anyways yeah so that should do it okay okay and all of those are on the the regular um the, the website your home site they are yeah There's so all links to all the okay because you can you can send me links to whichever ones great well we can we can talk about that after after i end this yeah. <laughs> okay well so thank you so much this has really been a very interesting and, and enlightening um conversation thank and you i really that. appreciate yeah well i really appreciate you coming on it's was all brand new to me so that's just very enlightening um okay let me finish up like i usually do which is that um neither of us are doctors and this is not to be seen as medical advice if you are having medical problems please go and see your own doctor and or go to the hospital if it's an emergency so all of that being said i will see everybody next week This has been Healthy Tips After 50 with Susan Rosen. To stay on the cutting edge of the most effective health strategies, subscribe to this podcast and let us know what you thought of the show with a comment or like on iTunes. Visit HealthyTipsAfter50.com for this episode's show notes, more resources, and free offers.